again welcome to this lesson in the series on social and ethical implications. Viruses are here to stay and they are more dangerous than ever. In our last lesson, we looked at different categories of viruses and how they work. Today we will focus on the dangers of viruses and also look at a few different types of viruses and how they affect your computer. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe some common computer viruses, discuss the dangers of viruses. New computer viruses are being created more and more frequently and are in fact becoming meaner and meaner. A virus normally reproduces itself, usually without your permission or knowledge. The way a virus behaves is to first infect your computer and then attack certain parts of the computer's software. When viruses first materialized, the effects were not as devastating as they are today. For example, if your computer contracted one of the early viruses, you might not have been able to work with your data files until the virus was removed. Once the virus was removed, your data could be recovered. Today, there are many malicious viruses which not only make your machine unusable, but also corrupt your data files, permanently damaging them. Hi Dawn, now why would someone want to write such a virus? I suppose some people find it amusing or clever. They may enjoy the power they have momentarily because they know that computer users are worried about the next new virus. Other programmers may write them to deliberately sabotage a particular organization that they have a grudge against. So what about our rights as computer users not to have unwanted software installed on our computers? The most common excuse made by criminal defense attorneys who represent authors of computer worms and viruses is that their client did not know how rapidly the worm or virus would spread or how much damage it would cause. So how quickly can these viruses and worms spread? Let's consider the following hypothetical example to answer that. Let's say that each victim's computer provides the address of four new victims and the worm requires one hour to be received by the next wave of victims. How long will it take to search the next victim's computer and find four new addresses to infect? This hypothetical example shows that in 10 hours there would be approximately 1,048,576 new victims. Although our example is a little far-fetched, it clearly shows how fast the possible growth is. It also shows why authors of worms should not be surprised when their worm rapidly gets out of control. Sure, those are shocking statistics. They are. Now I'm curious, how did it all start? Well, we think that the first known virus to spread between computers was found around 1982. The virus was called Al Clover and was written by a 15-year-old high school student called Richard Screnter. The virus was simply a program that infected Apple II computers via a floppy disk. So what did this virus do? Actually, it was fairly harmless. Each 50th time the computer was started, it would display a poem which read something like this. Elk Clover, the program with personality. It will get on all your disks. It will infiltrate your chips. Yes, it's Clover. It will stick to you like glue. It will modify RAM too. Send in the Clover. Is that all it did? Yes, it was done as a joke and by today's standards, it's not considered a malicious virus. Another non-malicious virus that infected computers in the 80s was a worm called Christma. It was created by a German university student. He released his worm in December 1987 on a network of IBM mainframe computers in Europe. The worm displayed an image of a conifer tree on the user's monitor while it searched for files on the user's account in order to collect email addresses. It then automatically sent itself to all of those addresses. This trick would be used again on a different operating system in March 1999 by the Melissa virus, which we discuss later in this lesson. 
The Chrysma worm deleted itself after it functioned once. However, the one copy that was deleted was replaced by multiple copies sent to everyone with an email address in either the inbox or outbox of the user's account. So the total number of copies continued to increase. The worm itself was relatively harmless. It neither deleted nor altered the user's computer files. The author of the Chrysma worm was identified by tracing the mail messages back to the original source. Was he punished in any way? His computer account was closed, but to my knowledge, he had no other punishment. So which was the first malicious virus? In 1988, the Morris worm was released onto the internet and became one of the first worms to spread via the internet. It was created by a Cornell University student called Robert Tappan Morris, now an associate professor at MIT. It affected only Vax and Sun computers. The worm was not written to cause damage, but rather to see how it would spread. Robert did not realize that there was a bug in the code which caused it to be more damaging than he intended. The bug infected each computer multiple times and each additional process slowed down the machine to the point that it was unusable. Oh, so Robert did not write the virus with the intention for it to do harm? No, he did not. However, around 6,000 major Unix machines were infected by the Morris worm. And in fact, it almost crashed the internet. The damage it caused is estimated to have cost between 10 million and 100 million US dollars. So was Morris prosecuted for creating the worm? Despite the severity of the damage, Morris was sentenced in May 1990 to three years of probation, 400 hours of community service and a fine of $10,000. He was however not sentenced to any prison term. In addition to this legal punishment, Cornell University suspended him from the university for at least one year. When Morris applied for readmission a few years later, Cornell refused to accept him. Morris earned his PhD at Harvard University in 1999. Now, you mentioned the Melissa virus earlier on. Now, what does this virus do? The Melissa virus was released on 26 March 1999. It was designed to infect macros in word processing documents used by the Microsoft Word 97 and Word 2000 programs. Macro viruses were not new. They'd been around since 1995. The innovative feature of the Melissa virus was that it spread by emailing itself to the first 50 addresses in the Microsoft Outlook email program's address book. This feature allowed the Melissa virus to multiply faster than any previous virus. The virus arrived at each new victim's computer disguised as email from someone who they knew and presumably trusted. David Lee Smith wrote the Melissa virus. Smith was arrested on 1st of April 1999. The CNN news report shows the police mugshot of Smith with a smirking expression on his face. Smith was also fired from his job at AT&T where he was doing computer programming. On the 1st of May 2002, a judge in federal court imposed the following sentence on Smith. 20 months in federal prison, 36 months of supervised release, that is probation, after his prison term ended, during which time he could access the internet only with the permission of his probation officer. He was also fined $5,100 and ordered to serve 100 hours of community service in the technological field. This could perhaps have meant giving lectures in schools about the harmfulness of computer viruses. Man, these viruses are scary things. Now, how can I check to see the effect a particular virus will have on my computer? Most antivirus websites have virus definitions that you can look up to find out the effect the virus will have on your computer. Symantec Corporation is one of the well-known companies that produce virus protection software. You will find many virus definitions on their site. 
Recently, Symantec released a report stating that during the first six months of 2005, 10,866 new viruses and worms for computers running the Microsoft Windows operating system were discovered. Microsoft is by far the largest targeted organization. The virus attacks on Microsoft have in fact increased from 7,360 in the second half of 2004 to 10,866 in 2005. This is a 48% increase, says Semantic. Are today's viruses any different from the earlier viruses? The big difference is that today's viruses are mostly written with malicious intent. In other words, the programmer writing the virus does so to see how many machines can be infected and usually how much damage can be caused. So do you get many new viruses? It is estimated that about 600 new computer viruses are released into the internet each month. Sophos is a computer company that makes programs to protect computers against viruses. The Sophos company experts say about 80,000 computer viruses have been spread by electronic mail to computers that use Microsoft Windows as their operating system. A company called F-Secure also makes computer security programs. Its experts say that new kinds of computer attacks will be aimed at damaging millions of computers very quickly. This kind of attack is called a flash worm. It will be able to infect millions of computers in less than 15 minutes. An F-Secure company computer expert says it is just a matter of time before someone tries to infect the internet with such a program. Sure. You know, something I find really fascinating is how these programmers come up with all these new viruses. Actually, not all viruses are brand new. It's also common for programmers to modify and change existing viruses to make them more lethal. This also makes it difficult for virus protection software to recognize them with the new code. One such virus is a worm called MyDoom, which was released on the 26th of January 2004. This virus is considered by many to be one of the worst viruses in history. MyDoom spreads through networks and emails. It slowed down the internet and attacked 1 in 10 emails sent worldwide. Many email servers were taken offline due to the devastating effect of the MyDoom virus. The virus works similarly to the Melissa virus in that it sent a personal email to people. It was different in that it used search engines to find email addresses. The author of the original MyDoom virus was never found and therefore could not be prosecuted. Since its birth over a year ago, at least 30 variations of the virus have been reported. Each time a new release of a virus is found, it's given the same name followed by a letter of the alphabet. For example, the second version of MyDoom is known as MyDoom.A, the third is MyDoom.B and so on. Is it common to have new releases of the same virus? Oh, very much so. That's what makes it so difficult to protect your computer. Just as you think you have cleared a virus from your machine, a new release materializes. It's extremely important for people who share information or for people who browse the net to make sure they are well protected by installing a virus protection package and that they update the package regularly. Also remember to be wary of opening an email if you do not know who sent it to you. Some programmers take advantage of things like natural disasters to trick you into opening an email that has a virus. As an example, the first virus that took advantage of the December 26 earthquake and tsunami appeared a few days after the disaster. It was called Zar.A. The worm used the subject tsunami donation, please help, and message copy, please help us with your donation and view the attachment below, we need you, to trick the person receiving the mail into opening the attachment and launching the worm. Oh, that is shocking. It is.
Tell me, is it only computers that are affected by these viruses? Actually, no. New technology in mobile phones has made them highly susceptible to different viruses as well. More than 70 mobile phone viruses have been discovered this year alone. One virus, known as Comwarrior, spreads itself via Bluetooth. Bluetooth is the name given to technology that can transmit a signal between telephones, computers and other devices over short distances without the use of a wire connection. ComWarrior sends text and picture messages to all the numbers in your phone's address book during the night. Users only discover the problem after receiving huge phone bills. Well, that's all we have time for today. Now for your task. Use a variety of resources to compile a list of viruses that have been recently released. Choose one virus from this list and analyze the effect it has had on computer systems. Thank you for joining us on this exciting lesson on software. Don't forget to go to our website for more information. Till next time, goodbye.